Good morning everybody. Welcome to another video. So I've updated my setup a bit, so I'm going to do a quick review of my setup and then we'll play a little. So previously I had an okay microphone hooked up directly to my Atomos Ninja 5 video recorder which is connected to my camera. And it worked okay but the balance wasn't great and it was kind of noisy. It picked up way too much uh, background noise. So I'll review my new setup here. So I currently have my camera, the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III with the Atomos Ninja 5 on top. Um, I'm basically using it just for easier recording and so I have a front monitor. I could also plug the camera directly into the computer, but I'm using an HDMI cable from the Atomos to the Atomos USB capture device currently. Um, gives me full 4K video. If if I was using the webcam mode for the camera, last I checked that was limited to 720p. So, you know, it works, but not ideal. So I feared I'd go through the Atomos. So I now have a new microphone. I'm using the Blue Blackout Spark SL. It's an XLR mic, as you can see. The I think the sound is very clear and the sound isolation is amazing. You probably can't hear it, but on the other end of the room, back behind the camera, my floor fan is actually running on full power, I believe, or close to it. So it's actually fairly noisy in here, um, but <laughs> this mic has great isolation. I am not using the padding on it because I don't need the sound cut. I actually have the volume up on the interface fairly high. I'm not using the high pass filter either. Um, personally, I don't really notice a difference in the audio with my voice, but I haven't tested extensively. Um, my previous video, I had the Theorem Mini plugged into a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 back there directly connected to the computer. Since I was getting the new microphone, I decided to upgrade the setup. So I now have down here in my audio rack, which you can't see because of the camera angle, I got a Focusrite Scarlet 18i20. So the microphone is going into one outlet or input. The Theramini is going into two other inputs. And I have the volume, I think, pretty decently balanced uh, directly in there. Each set of inputs is also an audio device back in OBS, which I obviously minimize because you don't want to see recursive video loops that can be amusing, but it's also distracting. So it's probably overkill. <laughs> uh, I could have gone with a 4i4, but I decided to go for the full rack mount model, which lets me you know, run the cables cleaner, puts everything right here, right by my hand, so I can quick glance see the approximate levels of the inputs and just monitor everything from here and come through it. And it gives me lots of options for expandability. So like I said the microphone is an in input three and I have the phantom power turned on for the inputs one to four block. It's blocked. There's two sets of phantom power. There's the one through four and a five through eight which are the all the XLR quarter inch combos. So the Theramini is in inputs five and six, and I actually have the pad turned on on those, and its volume is down pretty low because the line outs on the Theramini are actually quite hot. Um, along with that, as you may or may not know, the Scarlet is basically completely customizable by the control software. Uh, you can do all sorts of audio routing, loop back. The way I have it configured, outputs three and four, or inputs three and four, are being routed to line outs three and four. 
and then inputs five and six are being routed to line outs five and six and then those pairs go down to my top audio mixer so that I can independently monitor my microphone or the instrument or both although I usually don't monitor my voice <laughs> because I can you know more or less hear myself talk so it's more about hearing the instrument while I'm playing it since I obviously don't use the room audio for that since it's going directly into there um, each of those pairs is a separate audio device in Windows so in OBS I've added the I've added the two pairs for the microphone and the instrument uh, the one for the microphone I set that pair to mono mode so it will balance the signal between both channels the one for the theremin obviously it's a stereo pair so there's already left and right channels okay so I think that covers the technical aspect so let's see how it sounds and hopefully you're getting some good voice so we are currently on the classic theremin preset and I was thinking I'd just kind of walk through the presets and do a quick demo of each and we'll see how it sounds and how the video looks because I did an audio test but I've not yet done a video test with the new setup so it'd be interesting to see if this is synced so obviously let me know what you think how the video looks how the audio sounds if you think my balance is okay or if I need more voice or more instrument um, I think it's pretty good just from my quick test so far and also if anyone has recommendations for a new set of headphones that work well with glasses see I'm actually finally started wearing glasses again um, that would be great because these are as much as I love these headphones they are literally falling apart and they're not the most comfortable when you put them on over glasses so I'm starting to shop around unfortunately okay so preset one classic theremin you have that classic kind of wailing squealing sound I think I will bump my headphones up just a tad there we go okay now I can hear a bit more clearly but I can still hear myself talk classic theremin preset 2 super fat saw it's an interesting sound on this one I kind of like it I don't play it very often but it does have some neat it's a neat effect set and a neat look no range. Number three, ire. It's almost like a flute. Preset 4, and a wave. That has... That's a pretty wide uh, note scale. Interesting. Number 5, in orbit. Some of these I haven't really played much. I like it. Ribbons. It's kind of neat. 
Seven. Charlie Mute. Okay. So it's kind of a bassy. Bassy presets, can he? Elastic motion. Flutterfly, number nine. That's got a pretty clean scale. And as you probably notice, I do not have pitch correction turned on because I want to learn better without it. And it's more interesting than just cutting it to the pure notes. Ethereal. This is probably my favorite. I like the I like how it sounds. It's fun. Wondertron. Can you? Base. This one's pretty fun. The deep base. This is also probably one of the ones most likely to completely overblow my voice. So, it'll be interesting to see how this comes out. Square wavy. It's neat. Quiet time. So pretty bassy, but mild. That's not bad. Evolution 15. Interesting. Shaken. Same sound. Strange stuff. And for anybody wondering, yes, this is quite the workout, especially for the left arm because you're just holding it out. This one, at least, you're moving back and forth. <laughs> this one, you're just straight holding out. So, um, I believe most traditional players actually play standing up which is probably a little easier <laughs> on your arms because you're not sitting plus lifting your arms up above your shoulders. So it's probably a little easier, but that, you know, didn't really fit in with how I wanted my studio. 
So when I was working from home, it was nice because I would be sitting here where when I take a lunch break or something, you know, I could just turn around, play a little to relax. So sitting works well and I need the exercise anyway. So, okay, preset 20, spin cycle. Mm -hmm. And all these presets have different uh, scales, root notes, and different uh, FX settings. I haven't looked at them in depth, but the display actually does show the scale and the root note. So if anybody's curious about that, let me know and I can do a walkthrough and sort of, you know, do a quick review of the scale and root note for each preset. So, okay, number 21, Wobble Saw. It does kind of sound like a saw. Interesting. Do some fun stuff with that one. 22, Frolicking. It's kind of neat. <laughs> I like it. Twenty three ghostly. It's pretty soft, really. Any. It's probably meant to be since it's ghostly. Organic. I like this one. Almost like a big pipe organ. It's very strong. I like organic. 25, Lost in Fog. It's kind of neat. If you need the uh, foggy. North Pole, 26. Interesting. 27, Future Wars. It's kind of cool. 28, Omicron Preset 8. Omicron Omicron Percy 8 I don't know, the spelling's kind of weird <laughs> It's an interesting one Digitalis I do like this one <coughs> It's another kind of cool one I kind of liken it to a woodwind Almost sounds like a like a woodwind or something. I like it. Burning chrome. Okay, this is a weird one because the volume is actually inverted. So when you're almost at mute, it's the loudest. And as you go higher, it goes lower. So you actually mute, can mute it by going up or by going all the way down to mute. So there's like just this little spot in between where you can actually hear it. It's an interesting sound, challenging to play. 
31, low res. I like it, it's neat. 30 and 32 magic missile. This is the final preset that comes built in. And back to classic theremin. So you can hear what the original's classic sound is again. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Um, I am thinking of maybe picking up like Stream Deck or something to put here so I can easily control the you know recording start stop without having to go <laughs> turn around to the keyboard. Um, I don't know, might be an idea. Let me know what you think. Uh, Stream Deck or some, something similar to basically handle hotkey controls. I'm not using multiple cameras, so I don't think one of those devices would probably do me much good, especially since all my audio is being recorded directly to the PC through the Scarlet, which I really like. I'm glad I decided to go all the way for the 18i20 instead of just picking up another 2i2 or 4x4, because it looks good and it works really well. And so far, I'm very impressed with the uh, the blue spark. Um, as you probably see behind me, my streaming mic is the, an old school Yeti blackout, which, as anyone that's used one knows, is an amazing mic. But it will also pick up pretty much everything in the house <laughs> if you don't have it adjusted quite right. So. Um, going from that to using the spark for this these videos is actually quite a change and really neat um, I don't know I might actually consider picking up another one for streaming just because of the audio separation uh, because as anyone who has seen my room knows it's not real big in here and it does tend to get pretty warm so I often have my fan going, but you know, if I'm streaming and my fan's going, that's a lot of background noise. But this uh, spark seems to cut most of that out. Um, I guess what I would need to test would be putting the spark actually where it would be when I'd be streaming and see if it still cuts out the audio from back there. And that would tell me if that would even be an option. So, yeah. Oh, and also, if you probably noticed, I got the new arm as well. That's the blue compass arm, which looks nice, works well. Got my pretty red cables because I'm going into a scarlet. And, yeah, that'll be it for now. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know how the video looks, how the audio quality is, if the balance seems okay, or if I need to bump something up. And if you notice any horrible audio video sync issues that would definitely be good to know um, if there are I may need to consider just using the camera directly instead of going from the camera to the ninja and then out to the video recorder device so I don't know it'll be interesting to see so yep that's it for now thanks for watching